Smash Ultimate has been out for a little over three months now, and there have been hundreds of tournaments held in that time that are essentially asking the same question. Who are the best of the best in this new game? The short answer to this question is that many of the people who were considered the best near the end of Smash 4's life cycle have retained their spot at the top, but how exactly this top 10 comes together is quite a heated debate. So with this video, I'm going to provide you with all the information I can on the leading contenders for top 10 in Ultimate, while giving you my own list so that you can come to an informed decision on who comprises your top 10 as of right now. So without further ado, let's start by discussing the debate for Ultimate's best player between MK Leo and Tweak. Leo's Ultimate resume so far is quite impressive, with him never placing lower than 4th, as well as winning Genesis 6, the third largest Smash tournament of all time, and Summit, one of the most stacked events so far. However, the glitz does begin to slightly fade away when you shift over to looking at his head-to-head -head records, with him trading sets with Nairo and Light, and having losing records on Tweak and Mars. It's important to note that MK Leo has only suffered losses to those players on the right, which is something no other player on this list can boast and really speaks to his consistency. Tweak's ultimate resume is just as impressive, with him being able to boast four first place finishes at larger tournaments as well, with his wins all being ones he took without dropping a set. His lower finishes do show some cracks in his consistency, with his losses to Stroder's Greninja, ZD's Fox, and Esam's Pikachu potentially muddying his claim to best in the world. Tweak hasn't gotten the opportunity to prove himself against some of the players at the top of the table, partially due to his absence at Summit, but he has shown domination over the players he has gotten to meet, with his only losses against Light and Cosmos coming in December of 2018, when the game was still in its infantile stage. Both of these players have an argument for number one, but for me, Tweak takes the spot despite having slightly lesser peaks than MKLeo because of his exceptionally strong head-to-head -head records against top players that MKLeo is really not able to match. Tweak has yet to meet Samsora, Void, or Zachary in bracket, so if any of these players are able to consistently take sets from him, or if Leo, Nairo, DeBuzz, or Light are able to start turning their luck around against Tweak, I could very easily see MKLeo being crowned the best player in the world in the coming months. After this, the list gets much more difficult. The players that are in the conversation for around this range are generally the same for most people, but the order they're placed in can widely vary. So in no particular order, let's start by talking about DeBuzz. This Almar player has been to a lot of events in the short time that Ultimate has been out, and has performed exceptionally well at pretty much every one, and even picked up a first place finish in mid-February at Overclock by knocking Light out of the tournament, and by beating Mars from Grands and Loser's side. Much like MKLeo, DeBuzz hasn't suffered many losses outside the top level of play, with an early upset to the Japanese Pac-Man player T being the only exception. The thing holding DeBuzz back from being ranked higher by some people is his less than ideal records against some of the players in this tier with him, like Nairo and Samsora. But almost never missing top 8 and only dropping sets to the best players in the world makes DeBuzz a clear top 10 player. Nairo occupies the same space as DeBuzz, also only missing top 8 at a singular big event this year, with his two upsets coming from Cosmos, Inkling, and Captain Zack who switched from Bayo to Peach after getting 3 stocked in game 1 to win 3 straight games and take the set. His losses outside this highest echelon aren't limited to Genesis 6 though, with him losing to Shutone and Larry Larry at events so far this year. The attribute that distinguishes Nairo from his peers is his generally solid head-to-head -head records, with his flawless record against the Buzz and being able to trade sets with MK Leo being the most too impressive of the bunch. So Nairo has had similar placing to the Buzz with arguably worse losses, but a better head-to-head -head spread. While the last two occupy a similar space, Light's resume is a bit different. First off, he's the only player who's been able to take a set from both Tweak and MKLeo, which demonstrates quite a high ceiling of potential for Light. His only really bad overall performance he's had all year was recently at Summit, where he finished just outside of Top 8 for the first time in his Ultimate career. But his comparably long list of losses to fringe or non-Top 10 players, which includes Matty G, Jen, Suarez, King Ark, Larry Lur, as well as some players on this card, really hurts his argument for a high ranking for some. His head-to-head -head records on the side echo this sentiment, with him only posting winning records against Nairo and Void. So Light has amazing placings and some great wins, but the amount of players that he's dropped sets to is for sure a cause for concern. The last of players who occupy this tier with DeBuzz, Nairo, and Light is the South Florida Peach, Samsora. 
Like Nairo, he's been noticeably less active than DeBuzz and Light, and also like Nairo, he's fallen just short of taking home a first place at a larger event multiple times. His most notable run came at Smash Conference, where he was upset by fellow Floridian Blank in his fourth match of the event, and won nine sets in a row to make grands, which include beating Scat, Zero, Morpheus, DeBuzz, MVD, and Salem. But Semsor also has one of the worst performances of any in this tier, with his 13th at Frostbite dropping sets to Tri-State's Wishes and MVD. So Semsor has been less active than others, but has a solid head-to-head -head spread and great placings at some of Ultimate's biggest events so far. So now that we've discussed all four players in this tier two, how should they be ranked? I honestly think that any order of these four players is fair to do, depending on what you value more in a player, such as valuing peaks or consistency more, which is the crux of most Smash-based ranking discussions. But for me, DeBuzz takes the number three spot because of his lack of bad losses despite a high level of attendance at events, as well as the ability to take sets off of most of the top talent in the game right now. After him, fourth best in the world for me is Light. Despite the laundry list of losses to his name, I can't ignore how valuable it is to be the only player to have beaten the two best players in the world, alongside the other results he's put up. His lackluster summit performance does have me a bit concerned for his future, as if he continues to put up showings like that, he'll begin to slowly fall down the list. That then leaves us with Samsura and Nairo, who are actually quite similar after closer inspection. Both have failed to win a major event despite getting very close on multiple occasions, both have two winning head-to-head -head records on players also in this tier, and both have one significantly worse tournament that drags down the rest of their resume. But by an inch I have to give 5th to Samsara because of the slight edge he has with his 3rd at Genesis, 4th at Summit, and his insane run at Smash Conference. Nairo is right there behind and quite easily could jump up a spot with a singular great performance. This then brings us to the last two players who are a lock for top 10, Void and Zachary. Void and his Pichu have been a staple of top 8 since Ultimate's release, but he does not really have the big wins or solid head-to-head -head records to hang with his peers in the tier above. He does, however, have a second place finish at Genesis to his name, but that was significantly aided by Esam's upset over Tweak, but is still impressive nonetheless. It's also important to note that his fifth placing at Heart of Battle has an asterisk next to it, because Void elected to go all Roy at the event instead of his signature Pichu, which almost certainly allowed Wadi and Mars to more easily 3-0 him. And competing against him is the Japanese prodigy Zachary, who only recently turned 17. He got off to a slow start in his home region after switching over from Corrin in Smash 4, but since late December, he's won almost every local he's attended there. And at majors in the US, he's performed well, besides his quite disappointing 33rd at Frostbite. The key word, and arguably the hardest part about ranking Zachary, is potential, which is a common issue when ranking foreign players. We haven't seen how Zachary matches up against Tweak, Leo, and Samsora, but he's taken sets off of all of the top six he's been able to play, which is quite promising. So with that potential in mind, Zachary is my pick for seventh best in the world right now. But if you're more inclined to choose someone we have a bit more data on, it's completely understandable why you would swap him and Void in the eighth and seventh spots on the list. But after these eight, I think it's almost impossible to come to a solid consensus on who finishes out the top 10. There have not been nearly enough tournaments with a significant amount of top talent in attendance, so the data is already fairly scarce for these top 8, and it gets more difficult the lower we go. There are a few players though who have a light to decent claim to this spot, so I'm going to quickly highlight 5 of these players that are on my radar, and I'd love to hear down in the comments who are these 5, or even someone else, that fills out your personal list. The first of these players is Mars, who's had fantastic records against both MKLeo and Light at smaller events, but seems to crumble against the pair when they meet on the bigger stage. He also has a concerning string of losses to players like Matty G and Laid, as well as coming up short at the majors he attended. Next up is Cosmos, who has easily the cleanest resume of the contenders in this category. Suarez is the only one I would potentially label a bad loss for him, and having wins over Nairo and Void and solid placings at majors makes him quite an enticing player to include in your top 10. Shutone comes in next with a similar story of being untested, but having solid wins as his other Japanese counterparts. He's had quite an unfortunate draw of opponents at the two big US events he's been at, getting double eliminated by his fellow countrymen at Frostbite, and having Tweak drop into his lap at Genesis thanks to Esam's upset. So we know Shutone is good, but exactly how good is really hard to gauge at this point. Another Japanese Olimar main, Myron, also shares the unfortunate luck of having met MKLeo in bracket at three of his four US events. But he's got wins over Light, Larry Lair, and Prodigy, which makes him another hard player to place. 
And we've seen Frostbite be a lackluster performance for many players on this list, but ESAM takes the cake by not even making top 64 by losing to Dr. Mario and Krom, which really hurts his bid for top 10. ESAM still does deserve to remain in this conversation due to his win over Tweak at Genesis and his win over and near double elimination of Light at Ultimate Nimbus. And with those five players, that about wraps up our list of Ultimate's top players as of right now. I'd love to hear down in the comments what exactly your list looks like and what you expect the top 10 to be in the coming months. I'd also like to give a huge thanks to Pikachu942 who helped me fact check and discuss a ton of stuff for this video. He's super knowledgeable on results for every Smash game and occasionally writes articles about the history of the game and you can follow him over at at gch underscore pikachu942 by clicking the link down in the description. If you enjoyed this video and want more Smash Ultimate and Melee content in the future, consider subscribing to the channel. And that's about it for this video. I've been Saves Untitled, and I'll see you guys next time.